Welcome back to Tinker and Bruce. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. Got another little project here we're going to start this evening. Uh, actually, I've been working on it a little bit along. I found some oak lumber a couple weekends ago. <clears throat> it's not only oak, it's something called chestnut oak. And uh, I've never used any of this before, but it's a little darker and it's really got a gorgeous grain to it. And I really like it. One other thing about it, it's, it's, it's a lot heavier than the white oak seems to be. Uh, the grain seems to be a lot tighter, but I've run it through the planer and cleaned it up quite a bit. It, uh, it looks pretty good. It's gonna take some sanding, but uh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's good hard wood. What I'm gonna make is uh, a picture frame. My folks sent me up a picture. They uh, want me to make an 18 by 24. They've got a puzzle that they've put together and put the glue over it to hold the pieces together. So I'm gonna make an 18 by 24 picture frame is what I'm gonna do. Now, I'm gonna make most of this on the table saw. I'll have to cut the angles with the miter because these are too long to put in my sled, but I got a power miter saw. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the frame pieces themselves two inches wide. So I'm gonna set this up to cut that off of these. And I, this, this lumber that I purchased is uh, got a lot of patina in it. It's got a lot of knots, a lot of, uh, uh, oh, imperfections, I guess you might say. But it's gonna make some real pretty, real pretty lumber. And I've got several things I wanna make with it. I'd like to make myself a headboard and maybe a footboard for my bed. Uh, I'd like to make a, a couple of in another end table or two uh, might even make a table for the dining room to put by the window so I got several things I'm going to make and I got like I said I got some pretty nice lumber this guy gave me a real real nice deal on this lumber he's down there between uh, Martinsville and, and Bloomington down there in the Morgan Forest and he owns the woods and he cuts these logs from but uh, he gave me a real nice deal but uh, I, I bought 200 board foot of lumber for $2 a board foot, which I thought was exceptionally, exceptionally reasonable, uh, especially in what lumber's bringing today. For those of you who may like walnut, we always had a lot of walnut back home. Dad had always cut a lot of walnut off the farm. Uh, walnut is a very expensive wood to buy. This guy had walnut that was $8 a board foot. And I seen some boards down there that were over 24 inches wide and 10 feet long. That was a big walnut tree. And uh, again, $8 a board foot. We had so much walnut off the home farm that we were actually building gates, <laughs> building gates for the barn to help sort and separate cattle back in the day. It's what we could get too fast and we used it and it's what we had available to us. We knew it was valuable, but it has, it has definitely picked up some value over the years. So we're gonna cut some pieces here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got a little roller sit, uh, roller stand out here beyond the table saw. This is so heavy, I want it to kind of come over and catch on the roller. And then I'm gonna cut these two inch pieces across here. We're gonna to try to cut four of them and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, we're 
piece right here as you can see it's got a big old knot in it now I'm gonna make sure that knot goes on the front side because that'll really be pretty on the front of that frame and a couple little imperfections but now that I got these cut get these off of the tape off the saw man that stuff is heavy it is really it is really dense if anybody y'all knows about know about dense it's me <laughs> But anyhow, what I'm going to do in the back of these now, you've got to have a place for the picture to set. So those of you who have put frames or have put pictures in frames, you always, you'll notice you've always got a little channel right in here. Now I can cut this a couple ways. I can cut it with the router, which I'm not real crazy about on oak. And the reason for that is because oak is so hard it'll just splinter it off of there. And it just leaves a terrible, terrible, uh, I, I just don't like the way it, it comes out. And then it just, it, it almost ruins the, the wood. So what I'm gonna do, if you remember, when I cut out the trunnions, when I cut the trunnions out for that table I made, I'm gonna take my table saw and I'm gonna cut a groove in the back of this, but it'll be a series of grooves. And what those series of grooves will do I just keep moving my, my fence and then I finally take those out and that cuts me a nice ridge to put that in and it leaves me a nice clean cut on the back. It might be a little rough, but the picture's gonna set on it and you'll never know the difference. So the biggest thing is figuring out which side of these I wanna use. I think I will use, yeah, I'll cut it off of this side here because I got that knot that's so pretty, I want that to show. So I usually cut in about a quarter of an inch. Works real good. A quarter of an inch deep usually works fairly well. Now you say, okay, when are you gonna cut the length of these? I will cut the length when I get the grooves cut and get the decorative work done. That will be when I cut the length. And I think the decorative work on these, I think I'm gonna do that mostly with the table saw. I might take the router and round it on one side. But I kind of, I'll show you what I got in mind. And again, I just do a lot of this by the seat of my pants. Whatever comes to mind, Let's see what I got here. I may need to go a little more aggressive on here. Yep. I like to cut them deep enough so there's plenty of room for the picture to get in there. And then I have to uh, get a piece of flexi. That'll have to go in. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, I gotta have all these pieces of space right. We need to go a little bit deeper. Great play. We got a piece of flexi. I got the puzzle and a piece of masonite. And the masonite, you put the flexi in first, the puzzle, and then your masonite will go behind the puzzle for the picture in order to hold everything solid. Now let's see what we're going to do with that. Yeah. 
put on there, but I'm not going to put that on there. That's good. I'll be able to keep it good. Yeah, I might be able to put that on there. There's some sapwood back here. This lumber that I bought, this lumber that I bought had a live edge on it. And that live edge is a lot of times where your sapwood is and it's a little softer. Um, and I had to cut some of the live edge off. I think I'm gonna leave it on here. That again will give it a different look. I think it'll be kind of pretty. So that, that's that's what we're gonna do. And yeah, we'll cut it right up that side there. It'll be fine.
Well, I got a little bit of cleaning up to do, but not bad. A lot of this is just break and tear off. There's one there that'll break and tear off. There's not much left here. It's just basically paper thin. It all cleans up. But I can take a sander and clean that up a little bit. But again, nobody will see that. That will, that will not even be seen. So that's going to be, that's going to make some pretty stuff. This one here's got just, just paper thin stuff. Let's turn around here and get a chisel. We'll clean that up. Clean up real easy. Just go down through here and scoot that right off just like that heater come on again. Okay. So that cleans that up. So, like I said, there's some sand in there to do a little bit. Get it with this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now the next thing I gotta do is I need to put a design down through here. So again, I'm gonna make my settings on the tail. All I'm gonna do is make two grooves down this, down this board. So I'm gonna put probably, let's set it for one here and one here. And what I'll do, I'll make a run with the table saw, blade deep. I'm gonna take some of the depth out of this, so we're gonna make it not quite as deep. And then I'm gonna move it just a shade and widen it, so it's a little bit more than a saw blade width. You say, well, why do you do that? Two things, number one, it gives it more of a distinct look. The other thing is, when I go to put finish down there, I can take a Q-tip and I can run the stain or whatever I want to put on it down into that groove a lot easier than trying to get it to trying to get the finish down in there. If if I get a get a slot that's real narrow, it's extremely difficult to uh, make that happen. So let's uh, set this again. We do all of this with a fence. And this is just sort of a turn it on. I got plenty of material here to work with. So what I do, I always check it. See how it's going to play. I can live with that.
width of that groove down through there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another one right beside it. You can kind of see where my pencil mark is. I'm going to put another one there just like that. So we're going to have to move this. Actually, it's got to go closer to the blade. You can get yourself messed around here, confused here real easy. look to it it's not fancy it's not you know nothing really fancy like you buy in a store but folks this is handmade chestnut oak you can't buy this stuff in a picture frame store anywhere this this is the real mccoy this is real wood and that is a real three quarters of an inch thick um i'm looking at it wondering if maybe i should take it down a little bit more but i'm not going to Cause that, that that's the real McCoy right there. You just you don't get you don't get that at any picture frame store. You you can't buy that kind of stuff. Um, you're only gonna find this handmade. So anyway, you're seeing what the outer pieces are gonna look like. And uh, tomorrow night uh, when I come back, I'll set the router up. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna round the very front of this off so that it tapers a little bit toward the picture. I could take and run it across a table saw and just cut a bevel on it, but I think I'm going to round it off with, with the, uh, the router bits. So anyway, you've seen what I got started here. I know it's in real time. You're seeing me run it across a saw. There is some time involved in, in making this stuff. I've got probably an hour or an hour and a half, probably an hour, cutting these boards to length and cutting the live edge off and running them through the planer. So it, it takes a while, and this lumber is so heavy, it's 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 hard to deal with. It's that heavy. So anyway, thanks for joining. And uh, again, this is Tinker and Bruce. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Again, I'm just doing this to share with the world what I do, and um, it's fun. I enjoy it. And again, if anybody wants anything made, let me know and uh, reach out to me. I'm on 
Facebook. You can message me. And uh, my name is under Bruce Kittle. You'll be able to find me, shoot me a message, and I'll see what I can do. Again, thanks for watching, and hope to see everybody next time around. Have a good evening, everyone.